Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a full auto, a burst, and a single fire system for your gun, and being able to switch between the two. And now you can have this different for each gun as well, you don't have to have all three. This works with if you want just one, just two, or all three. Doesn't matter, you can pick and choose and customize it for however you want. But I'll show you what this is going to look like. So if I hit play, let me get in here. If I shoot now, this is single fire. If I hit B, we're going to go into full auto. If I hit B again, we're going to go into burst. If I hit B again, we'll go back to single, and we'll just toggle between those three there like that. And all of these are completely customizable, so you can make this quicker, you can make that quicker or slower, and you can make those quicker or slower as well. Completely customizable for you. So I'll get right into this and show you what we're going to do. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up our character blueprint, or basically wherever you have your shooting code. So if this is in a specific gun, open that up. So if you have like a master gun, do it in there, but this is where you have the shooting code, so for me that's content, first person BP, blueprints, first person character, and as you can see here we have the spawn projectile code here, which is where I have all of this shooting mechanics in. So do this wherever you have that. What I want to do here is just set a few booleans, so actually let me delete these as well. So we're going to want to make a boolean. So to do that we're going to hit the plus variable down here, and I'm going to call this one is shooting. Pretty straightforward, you know what it's going to do? It's going to tell this machine if we're shooting or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that here off of our input action fire. So we can just drag and drop that onto pressed like so, and also onto released like that. So when we are shooting, we're going to set this to be true. When we're not, we'll set it back to be false. So this is just a simple way to let us know and to be able to communicate with the other parts of code to know when we actually are shooting or not. This is important for the full auto. And keep it like that. So pressed will go into there and go back into this montage or whatever you have after this. And that is that simple part done. So now after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the full auto system first. So to do that, I'm just going to come to the right over here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a custom event like that. I'll just call this one full auto fire like so. You can name this whatever you like, but that's what I'm going to call it. Out of this, we're going to go into a branch. So hold down B, left click. Let's get a branch like that and plug that into the execution of there. The condition of this is going to be our is shooting boolean here. So we only want to be shooting from our full auto if we are already shooting. So this isn't going to randomly fire off, this will only work if we want to be shooting, so we are. After this, this is where you then also check to see if you have enough ammo. So I'm not going to get too much into that in this video, but I did do a video yesterday on that if you want to watch that as well. So here you just simply check to see if you have ammo or check to see if you can shoot. So actually I will do a very quick version of that now, just so we get it working. So a very quick simple way of doing this, this isn't what I did last time, so that one's more efficient, so I recommend watching that as well. But for this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get another boolean called ammo, set this to be an integer. You can put that to be whatever you like, so mine's default 50, because I had already. And we'll get another one called max ammo, which mine's default is 100, so you can set those to be whatever you like as well. What I'm going to do is then I'm just going to make another custom event up here, so right click, custom event, I'm going to call this one check can shoot so i'm going to go over this very quickly i just want to get this done but more in-depth video last time out of this i'm just going to get the ammo so actually no, i won't do that sorry hold on b left click to get a branch as we want to check now get the ammo so get ammo this is going to be a greater than so an integer is greater than an integer and we're just going to leave that at zero so if our integer is more than zero so we have ammo that will then go in here so we want to come out of true so basically we want to come out of true of this and we want to set another variable called can shoot question mark this one being a boolean so obviously if we can shoot or not off of true we'll set that to be true off of false we'll set it to be false so if we have enough ammo we can shoot but if we don't have enough ammo we can't shoot so again very simple way of doing it but i have a much better more in-depth version last time as this video isn't about this this is about just single burst and full auto and switching between them so check can shoot like that I compile save and go back down to our full auto code here so after this branch, what we're going to do is come out of the true, and we're going to call that function of check can shoot. So check can shoot like that. Out of this, we just hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that in there. The condition of this is going to be can shoot. So we're checking to see if we can shoot, and then if we can, we're going to. If we can't, so off of false, we're going to set is shooting to be false. So basically, we're going to be on full auto. As soon as we run out of ammo, we're not going to be shooting anymore. So we we'll set is shooting to false. Out of the true, we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, and plug that in there. I'm going to set this to be 0.15, but you can set this to be whatever you like. This is just how fast the full auto is going to be. So increase this duration to make the bullets come out slower and more spread out. Decrease this duration to make the full auto faster so they're closer together. So change that value to get it for perfect for what you want. I'm just going to select all this, hit C to comment it, and call this full auto fire, like so. And then the way to actually connect this to our code is that the completed of this delay 
I'm just going to come down into this play and a montage there. So basically where we have our start of our shooting code. So you see here we're shooting. This is where the code actually starts. So we'll just go into there. We don't need to bother about this boolean as we already have that set. So we'll just do that like so. I'll just double click this to get a reroute node as we're going to be wanting to use that later on to connect to everything else as well. So that works like that. But now to actually be able to activate this, so all we're doing here is we're making the code, but we need to actually be able to call it. So to do that, we're going to go to the very end of our code. So for me, that's this play sound. So again, go to the end of yours, hold down B, left click to get another branch, plugging that into there like so. Condition of this is going to be full auto. So we're going to get another variable, so hit plus variable there, call this one full auto question mark, making sure that's a boolean, compile default a value of false. Plug the condition in there like so. So basically, if we're on full auto, Obviously, as well, if you want the gun to start on full auto, you can tick this, but I'd recommend leaving it as false so it starts on single, as that's what most are. But again, you can customize this for whatever you want. Out of true, what we're going to do is just simply call full auto fire. So call that custom event function that we made earlier, and that is that done. We hit compile, save, we got full auto set up. So actually, if I just tick this just to show you what this is doing, if I minimize hit play, you can see if I hold down left click, we're going to have full auto. So we have our full auto function working already. You can see because I set it to 0.15, the balls are going to be bullets, sorry, are going to be 0.15 seconds apart from each other. So every 0.15 seconds, it's going to fire off like that. So that works perfectly. So if we go back to our code, we'll set up the burst fire now. So I'll also just make sure to set that back to false, like so. Burst fire, going to be a very simple thing as well. It's going to be very similar to full auto. So if we go back to this code, underneath it, we'll right click, get another custom event, and call this one burst fire, like that, so we know exactly what it's doing. Out of this, we're again just going to simply call check can shoot to see if we can shoot like that so this is where you're seeing if you can or not get a branch hold on b left click get a branch plug that in there boolean of this is can shoot so we're seeing if we can shoot and if we can we're going to then shoot false we're going to set is shooting to be false so this also means that if you are in burst fire and then you run out of ammo halfway through it won't finish the burst fire it will stop as you've obviously run out of ammo and then we'll hold on d left click to get a delay Again, this is the basically the exact same process as up here. The only reason we haven't got is shooting is because this is obviously a loop. So we're going to be holding down left click. So if we let go of left click, this will carry on firing. But we don't need that here as we want it to carry on after we let go as it's a burst. So this delay here is again how quick it is. So I want this to be 0.05 as obviously burst is quite quick. It just shoots three times or however many you want and then it's done. So I'm going to set that as 0.05. But again, set that to be whatever you like. Again, increase in duration means it's slower, decrease in duration means it's quicker. Set that to be what you want. Now the complete of the delay, we're gonna go back into that reroute node up here, which is why I said we're gonna make it. So it just basically connects back to the start of our code. You can just go straight in there, but this obviously looks a lot nicer. So I'll just make another one just to keep it neat like so. Compile, save, and again, we want to call this at the end of our code. So now you see we have this branch here. So we have false if we're not in full auto, we want to be in burst. So basically out of false, we're gonna come out, hold on B, left click to get another branch. Condition of this is gonna be burst fire. So we get another plus variable, call this one burst fire question mark like so, and plug that into there like so. So if we're on burst fire. So if we're not, we're gonna do nothing. So false, leave that as nothing. True, if we are, we want to burst fire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up true, and we're gonna get a do n node. So do n like that which basically means it's going to do this a set amount of times that we choose. The amount we choose is this n value here. So what I wanted to do is I want the burst to be three, as that's what it most commonly is in games, but you can choose this to be whatever you like. So I want this to be three, so that it's going to shoot three times. So I'll set this to a value of two. The reason we're doing two is what you're going to do is you're going to set it to one below what you want, because it's going to count as our first left click as well. So we're going to shoot, that is the first bullet, and then it's going to do that another two times, which is our burst, getting it to three. So whatever amount you want it to be, set this to be one below that. Out of the exit, we're going to simply call the function burst fire. So it's going to do that, and it will do that three times or two times as you can see. And then to be able to reset this so we can do this again afterwards, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of the counter, again, equal integer. So we get equal, equal like that. This is gonna be set to the N node you have there. So one number you have in the N integer there, you want this to be the same. So basically when it is finished, when it's completed, we'll go into this. So hold on B, left click to get a branch, plug that into there like so. So basically when this reaches the max amount of integer, it's finished. So if the true of this, we want to basically reset this. So false, do nothing as it's not finished. True, we're gonna hold on D, left click to get a delay. And I'll set this to be something small like 0.15. Now 
Now the reason we're doing the delay is because otherwise it will go into a full auto fire, which isn't what we want. So this just means that it's going to stop and then reset it so we can do it again. So to complete that delay, we'll go into the reset like that. I'll just double click these to get some reroute nodes, to make it a lot more organized and neat like that. So that is how we then set up burst fire as well. So now we have it to be either single fire, full auto or burst. The single fire comes in as that's what it is just by default anyway, obviously. So now we have so single, full auto, burst. Now we need to actually be able to switch between them. So as you can see, these are going to be false, so it's never going to do any of these. So how do we do that? How do we be able to toggle between these values? All we'll do is we'll just come down here and find some space. Actually, I'll comment that as well. So select it, press C, burst fire like that. Then down here, we'll get some space. This is where we'll toggle between it. So we'll compile, save, and then we'll set up an action mapping. So to do that, I'm going to go to edit, project settings, and once this loads, we'll go down to input down here. And then don't worry about these other action mappings. These are just ones which I made in previous tutorials. So we're going to hit the plus action mapping here. And I'm going to call this one switch firing mode or toggle firing mode or fire mode, whatever you want to call it. That's what you name it. The non here is the key you want to press. So I want it to be B as that's what it most commonly is. So set it to what you want. For me, that is B. Once you've done that, you can just close it straight away. Then in here, we'll right click and we're going to call that action mapping we've just made. So I called mine switch firing mode like that. You can see this here is where we're going to be able to toggle between it. So this is very simple as well, pretty much. So we already have all the booleans we need because we have full auto and burst. That is all we need to check. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch. As I said, check. So we're going to be using a lot of branches here. So when we pressed, you're going to go into the branch as that is when you want to be switching. The first one we're going to check for is full auto. So if full auto is true, so go into that condition there. If it's true, so if we are on full auto and we press B to switch, we're going to set it to be false. So set full auto to be false. As we're not in full auto anymore, we're going to switch from it. I'll do the false in a minute. Out of this set here, we're going to get another branch. So hold on B, left click, get a branch and plug that in there. Condition of this is going to be burst fire. So we're checking to see if we're on burst fire now as well. So we've already done full auto, turn that off. Then if we're in burst. So if we're not in burst, we want to go into burst. So off of false, set burst fire to be true. And if we are in burst, we're going to set it to be false. So off of true this time, set it to be false. So what this is doing is if we're in full auto, we're going to go out full auto. And if we're not in burst, we'll go out full auto and into burst. But if we want on burst, then we will. So actually this burst fire here off of true needs to be false. So off of true, set it to be false like that. But now how do we go back to single fire? That's going to be off of this full auto branch here. So if full auto is false, we're going to hold on B, left click, get another branch, plug that in there. This one is then again going to be burst. So burst like that, if true, so burst is on, we're going to set burst to be false like that. And then if burst is false, we're going to set full auto to be true like so. So tick it like that. So what this is doing is when we press B, if we're in full auto, it's going to set that to be false. And if we're in burst, we're going to set that to be false as well, which means we're then going into single fire. If we're in full auto, we'll come out of it. And then if we're not in burst, we'll go into burst. And then obviously if we're in burst, we're going back to single. So if we're not in full auto, we'll see if we're in burst. If we are, we'll go off burst, going into single. If we are in burst, we'll go back to full auto, setting that to true. So what this is going to do is it's going to go from full auto to burst to single. So you can switch all these around to go from full auto to single to burst or burst to full auto to single, whatever you like. You basically just switch around these booleans here. So the order in which you're checking them in. So I'm just going to select all this, hit C to comment it and call this switch firing modes. You might notice that I'm just naming these the exact same as this action mapping here. The reason I'm doing that is because if you zoomed out, you can't read that action mapping, so you don't know what it does. But you just see switch firing modes, you know exactly what this code does. So if there's an issue, you know where to go straight away. And so that should be the code done. So if we compile, save, we can test this out. One other thing I'm going to do actually is just lower the sound of this. This is still quite loud, even though I've already loaded it. So it's just under place sound location, volume multiplier. I'll set this to 0.05, so that's going to be very quiet, so I'll 0.15, so we don't really need to hear it. So compile, save, and we'll test this out. So we're in, you see I left click, it's just a single. I'm holding this down, nothing else is happening as if we're in single fire. If I hit B, we're going to have to full auto. I'm holding it down, we're in full auto fire, I let go, we stop. Hit B again, we're in burst. I'm holding it down, nothing's happening as we're in burst like so. I press it once, it's just going to fire off three times. So again, if that's too fast for you, change it however you want. But I think that's quite good. 
hit B again, we go back to single, I'm holding it, nothing happens, we just shoot once. And we can toggle between these completely for you. So this works perfectly. As you can see, if I'm in full auto, so full auto like that, and I press B, it'll go to burst and stop, as we've then stopped full auto. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, is we've done everything I wanted to do. We set it up so that we can go from burst fire to full auto fire to burst. So sorry, I said burst, I'm at single. So what we're going to do is we go from single fire to full auto fire to burst fire, all the way back to single. And we're in this loop here, so we can set this to be whatever we like. And you can completely customize this as well to be perfect for you. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.